This is the only app you need to screen record with Final Cut Pro, and best of all, it's free. So you can't record your screen with Final Cut Pro, but I'll show you the three apps I use, including one that comes with your Mac. Then I'll share five tips for editing your screen recording in Final Cut. And be sure to stay till the end before you quit because I'll show you how to animate your keystrokes like this. Well, let's begin. So the first way to record your screen is to use QuickTime Player. This comes with your Mac computer and it's pretty easy to use. Press command space bar and type quick time player. There it is. Press enter and bring it up. You can cancel this window and then go up to the menu bar and select file and then new screen recording. Or you can press control command N. It'll pull up these controls here at the bottom. Let's go through them. This X will cancel the screen recording. And then these are for doing screen captures or screenshots. So images of your screen. You can capture the whole screen or select a window of an app or select a section to do a screenshot. We want to do screen recordings. That's these options right here. We can do record entire screen or record a portion. I'm going to select the entire screen. And then over here we have some options. If we click on that, we can change where we're going to save it. Uh, let's put it on the desktop. And we can also add a timer if we want a little countdown timer before we start recording. And if we want some audio, we can use that as well. And we have a couple options down here, including showing mouse clicks. All right, when we're ready to go, just press record and we'll select our display, do display one, and it's gonna record this screen right here, which is Final Cut Pro and a screen recording. When we're done, just go up here to the top and press this stop button and the screen recording will end. If we go to the desktop in Finder, we can see we have a screen recording and it's been timestamped as well. I can open this up in QuickTime Player to play it back, which is Final Cut Pro. And so it did a good job recording. It captured my whole screen and it was free to use. Now I can import this recording into Final Cut Pro and edit it if I want. All right, the next screen recording software that I use a ton is called Loom. It's at loom.com. And I use this to make quick screen recordings to send to my coworkers or to customers that need help. I can record my screen quickly and then share that link with them and they can watch it. And it's all so fast. I have it installed up here. I just click up here on the Loom app and I can decide, you know, if I want screen only, full screen. And I can also do this cool thing where I do my camera with my screen. Hi, so people can see me and then I just click start recording and it's recording right now. It's recording my camera and my screen and I'll stop it and it pulls up a web page automatically and now I can take this link, I can copy it and I can share it with other people and they can watch my video. And it's so much better than typing or writing an email. I can show somebody what I need to do right away. I love Loom, I use it a ton. Okay, the last recording software is called ScreenFlow. I'm actually using this right now to record my screen for this tutorial. It's a great software, but it does cost money, but it has a lot more options and you can actually edit your screen recording in the app itself. I also prefer it because I have a feeling that QuickTime makes really big files and ScreenFlow seems to be smaller files. However, I have not tested it, so I do not know for sure. All right, so we've recorded our screen and now we're ready to edit it in Final Cut Pro. So I've got this screen recording that I did before and we can edit it just like other video. First thing I want to do is go to the inspector. It's over here on the right and if it's not open, just click this little sliders to open it up. And I'm going to set my spatial conform to none. And what that does is it gives me the full actual size of the screen recording. So I can zoom in and out without losing resolution. We'll zoom out a little bit here so we can see things better. There we go. Now, one of the first things you'll probably want to do with a screen recording is speed it up, especially if you're showing like a tutorial. So here I am showing how to change text, but I don't want to take all that time to do it. So I want to speed it up. So I'll go to where I want to start the speed up, put my playhead and I'll just press Command B 
to split the clip and I'll go to where it ends right there and I'll press command B again Then I'll select this middle clip and press command R to bring up the retimer and if I click on this button here or this little down arrow I can select fast I can go eight times faster let's play that back Nice. I can also adjust the speed by clicking and dragging on this bar at the top. I can make it slower or even faster. If I want to reset my speed, just click this arrow and select normal. A lot of times with your screen recording, you might come to a spot where you want to hold it. You want to create a freeze frame. So I want to do a freeze frame right there on that text. So I'll move my playhead to that spot and then I'll press shift H to add a hold. You'll see this red section now. If I play that back, we see some movement and then it freezes and it holds and then it goes back into the screen recording. This is great if you need to point something out. I can change how long that hold is by clicking and dragging left and right. I can also select smooth end transition. This will add a little transition at the end that will go from a freeze frame back to normal speed. Let's check it out. So it freezes and then it comes back in and now we're back to normal speed. To turn the retime editor off, just press command R. Now let's add a cool effect that makes it look like we're looking at the screen from the side. Open up the effects browser by clicking this button here or pressing command five and go down to the distortion section and drag and drop flipped onto your clip. You'll notice that it flipped the screen around. Select the clip, go to the effects browser and change amount to about 15, that looks good. Now go back to the effects browser and go to blur and let's drag and drop focus onto our clip. What I wanna do is make the left kind of out of focus and the right out of focus and the center in focus to draw the attention to a certain part of my screen recording. So to do that, go to the inspector and on the focus effect, Let's change the height. We want it to go all the way up and down. That's looking pretty good, about 100. And then we can adjust the width. If we bring it in, we can see that narrow band, but we want it a bit bigger. There we go, that looks pretty good, around 60. And then we can also move that point of focus as well. And we can even animate that during the clip's duration. We'll just keep it in the center right here. And here's what that looks like. All right, are you ready to record your screen? Has this video been helpful? If you're enjoying it, will you please give it a thumbs up so other people will find this video? I really appreciate it. And coming up, I'll show you how to add overlays and call outs to your screen recording. All right, another thing you'll wanna do with re screen recordings is zoom in and out when you wanna show or highlight a specific area. So the easiest way to do that is to cut immediately. So let's take my clip and let's zoom back out a little bit to where we can see pretty much everything right there at 75. Okay, so we're doing good. But now I want to, as I change the text, I want to cut into that. So I'll select my clip and place the playhead where I want to cut and press command B. Now we have two clips. I'll select the second one and I will increase the scale. We'll go to 90. And I can use these position parameters to adjust the position. I can also right click on it, select transform and click anywhere to move my screen recording. That looks pretty good. I'll press done. And now I have this quick cut to zoom in. That was a straight cut, but now we can animate and zoom in that way. So I'll put my playhead where I want to start animating. I'll select my clip and in the inspector under transform, I'll set a keyframe for position and a keyframe for scale. Then I'll move forward about a second in time. I'll right click and select transform and let's zoom out a little bit so I can grab these handles. There we go. I'll grab one of these corner handles and I'll pull it out to zoom in and I'll move over as well. We'll recompose this shot. There we go. And then I'll press done. Let's check out this animation. Nice, it zooms in to where my mouse is. I'm selecting a font, that looks good. If I wanna tweak that zoom, I can select my clip and press Control V to bring up the keyframe editor. 
and you'll see the different keyframes right here. I can click on those and move them so I can make the animation last longer or I can make it faster. Let's do a fast zoom. Nice. All right, if you don't wanna deal with keyframes, I get it. There's a built-in tool we can use to do zooms. It's called the Ken Burns effect. First, let's cut our clip. I wanna zoom in right here, so I'll press Command B, and we'll select the second clip, right click on the viewer, and we'll select Crop, and we'll select Ken Burns. Let's zoom out a little bit. This green box shows where we start, and red is where we end. So let's zoom in a little bit more and move that over. And let's select the green and kind of reframe that to the center. Okay, we can preview it by clicking this button here. And you'll see it slowly moving in, and it happens during the whole clip. We'll fix that in a little bit. Let's press Done. And then let's go to where we want it to end. We want it to zoom in pretty quickly right here. So we'll split the clip with Command B. And now we zoom in quickly. That looks good, but it resets. We want it to match up with that point. So we'll right click, select Crop, and we'll set the start and end to be exactly the same. Then press Done. So we have our zoom in. And then we have our screen staying right there where it's supposed to be. Nice. All right, now let's add some overlays. Go to the Generators browser by clicking this button up here, scrolling to the bottom, and go to Elements and add Shape to your timeline. Select the generator and go to the Generator Inspector. Let's change Shape to Arrow, and let's change the colors. We'll do a nice little outline. That looks pretty good. We'll make the outline a little bit thicker, not that much. And let's turn the drop shadow off. Now, I can move this around, but I can't change its size, so I'll right-click on it, select Transform, and then let like before, let's zoom out a little bit. I'll use this handle to change the size. There we go. And I can change the rotation and I can also change the position here. So maybe I wanna point out this section right here. Perfect, I'll press done. And now we have an arrow pointing out a certain part of our screen recording. But you know what, we need to animate it. Let's go to our transitions by clicking on the transition browser and go down to the movement section. And let's use scale. Find scale, drag and drop it onto your arrow. And let's change the duration by clicking and dragging here and on the end, there we go. And now our arrow animates in and points out our screen recording. And then, what? That's not right. So let's click our transition and go to the transition browser and let's select out. And now our arrow grows big and fades off. Nice. All right, let's try something else. Add your shapes generator again. And this time we're gonna keep the circle, but we're gonna turn off the middle. So let's uncheck fill and let's make our outline a little bit bigger. There we go. Let's change the color. All right, and then let's change the size by right clicking and selecting transform and let's change it. And then let's reposition it where we want to highlight. Let's say we wanna highlight that text. Perfect, then press done. Now this is a cool transition. We'll use a cool animation for this. In the transition browser, go down to wipes and add clock to your circle. Select the transition and move control to the center of your circle. In the inspector, change edge treatment to zero. And let's play that back. Nice, we've got a cool circle drawing on, but it's a little slow. So let's change the duration and now let's play it back. Perfect, I love it. Let's delete the second one and hold down option and click and drag the first one to the end. It animates on, people are looking at our screen recording and then when we're done, it animates off. Perfect, I love it. All right, now let's add some keystrokes. Those are really helpful when doing tutorials. Go to titles and go to the top, go to the build-in section of the titles, and let's add this scale text template to our screen recording. Here's how it looks. Let's select our title, and if we double click on the text, we can add in our keystrokes. So we can type our keystrokes if we want, shift plus F, right? Or we can insert the symbols. So go up to edit emoji and symbols. So we can search for different keystrokes like option. We can put that in by just clicking it, and then we can add more if we want. You can see I've got some that frequently use, so I'll add command in there. There we go. And now we can put like a plus sign in between and 
There we go. Now I can use this on-screen control to move this text around. Let's put it over here where it's a little easier to read. And we've got this nice animated keystroke to show people what we're pressing on our keyboard in our screen recording. Now you know how to record your screen and spice it up with edits, overlays, and callouts, but there's more you can do. I put together my top 15 keyboard shortcuts for cutting and editing footage like screen recordings. Take a look. Go on now.